This video and others like it are funded by viewers like you. Thanks for your support. Now foreigners want to feel like Pisces by staying in hostels in the city center. Let's jump into it. Follow along. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. You're watching DC Born Rob Racing Borders. I'm DC Rob. Let's jump into this story right away. In what some call the resurrection of downtown Medellin, a handful of hostels appeared that looked like they were taken from a European city. David Aras de Zabal and his family opened the second headquarters of Central Hostel last year, a hostel for travelers and backpackers located on Avenida Cordobo with Maracaibo in the center, in the heart of the city. It is a traditional mansion, or better yet, four mansions, joined by a corridor that the, in total adds up to about 900 square meters with 21 rooms and space for up to 85 people. The first headquarters of the hostel, which bears the same name, was opened in 2022, that it is three-minute walk from the new hostel on Playa Avenue, two blocks from the Pablo Tawon Uribe Theater. That, however, it's just one house, also with heritage architecture, but with space for only 36 people. The value proposition for this pair of hostels and others that have emerged in recent months in the La Candelaria, in houses with high ceilings and red wine, mustard, rumbus tiles, it is to show tourists what daily life is like in Medellin, and what better place for that than in the center where between 1 and 2 million Antiochians pass through each day. Last year, approximately 1.7 million visitors arrived in Medellin, half of which were foreigners, and it is expected that between this year and next year, the figure will soon rise to 2 million. Normally, these tourists stay at hostels, hotels, and Airbnbs in neighborhoods like Laureles and El Poblado, close to shopping centers, the most famous nightclubs and luxurious restaurants, but far from the hustle and bustle of everyday life of Pisces. While in 2023, the average hotel occupancy in the El Poblado was 74.1%, and in Laureles it was 73.7%, and the center of the city it was only 40.3%, 14 points below the average occupancy it had in 2022. Additionally, the center's guests are primarily locals, while in El Poblado, two out of every three guests are foreigners. In the center, there's only one foreigner for every eight locals. However, in the hostels of Aras de Zabal, there are many Germans and French people who like to buy pitaya with two hands in the carts that are parked on La Playa, and then jump in line for the bathroom, which is almost always shared. The idea with this is that people who know what our grandparents' houses were like and feel as if they were in them, says Juan David, who is an optimist about the recovery of the center, which in recent years has seen its numbers multiply. Population of the street dwellers and increase in criminal gangs that not only profit from extortion, but have left more dead in that area than in any other commune of the city. In 2023 alone, there were 76 murders in La Candelaria, of the 375 in all of Medellin. However, Arista Zabal says that the area is safe and that the atmosphere during the day is enviable. However, the situation changes after seven at night when the commercial establishments close and people go home. And in a good part of the center, only the street dwellers remain who, although they almost never mess with anyone, give a feeling of insecurity and generate bad odors since they leave their feces on the platforms or on the streets. Juan David says that the owner of a nearby hotel who poured water on them and to make them leave had the facade of a house filled with ish, we'll say. However, he and other Paisa merchants and businessmen are convinced that the center, because of its architecture, because of its environment, because it is walkable, and because it has good public transportation, has a new opportunity to reemerge, not only during the day, but also at night and not only for the benefit of tourists, but also for locals. In mid-2023, more than 20 hoteliers and the center came together in the kind of a union called Center W in order to have a greater impact on the city's tourism sector. Restaurants took the first step. 
with the aim of taking advantage of thousands of pedestrians who pass through the center every day and giving it an environment where there is more formal commerce and less perception of insecurity. Especially at night, restaurants and bars have begun to arrive or have returned to the city center top-notch bars. In the next few days, inside the Museum of Antioquia, but on the edge of the street and Botero sculptures, there will be a new headquarters of El Social, the traditional delicatessen from El Poblado that was one of the pioneers of Calle Provenza. Also, in the old Avianca building next to the Veracruz Church, in an area that has become the center of sexual exploitation and micro-trafficking, they open Spanish and Mexican cuisine establishments. In fact, at the Central Hostel, they have a Colombian cuisine restaurant where the chef is Andres, a chocoano, and learned the recipes from his aunt, Amparo, and now offers, based on national products, dishes such as banana fritters and tuna burgers. Adding to this story, a growing number of entrepreneurs are eyeing Plaza Botero and its surrounding commercial areas as the next hotspot for tourism and entertainment in Medellin following in the footsteps of the success seen in Provenza. Samuel Risrepo, co-founder of the popular El Social establishment, is leading the charge with plans to open a new location, El Social Maestro, in the Museum of Antioquia. Despite initial skepticism from associates, Risrepo sees Plaza Botero as a diamond in the rough, aiming to create a vibrant space with a museum-like ambiance offering food, drinks, and live music. Other entrepreneurs like Juanita Caboyo, are also joining the movement, bringing their successful restaurant concepts to the area. However, while this influx of investment promises economic revitalization, concerns linger about how to address social challenges such as insecurity, homelessness, and sexual exploitation to ensure the transformation is more than just superficial. So there you go. Looks like they're uh, trying to upgrade downtown. Would I stay there? Not me. You're welcome to it, but no. Nah. Why? Why would I? I? You know, you got a long way to go before I'd go down there and get, stay in a hostel. My hostel? I wouldn't even stay at a hotel down there, but that's neither here nor there. You're welcome to it. If you're up to date with the latest news out of Medellin, Colombia, thank you guys for watching. Remember to travel, but travel safe. On behalf of the flight crew, thank you for flying with us and have a pleasant day. Okay, hold, hold, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Right quick. If you need to have things shipped to Colombia, shipped to someone else, or shipped to yourself to Colombia from the United States, make sure you reach out to CaribbeanShipper.com. CaribbeanShipper.com. The contact information is coming next. Join me on social media. I am DC Born Rob Official on Instagram. I am DC Born Rob Official One on TikTok. I am DC Born Rob O on Twitter. Don't be like this guy right here. You're you're just so stupid. I, I had to send you a video to let you know that you're so stupid. That's right. Don't be like this guy right here. Join me on social media. Headed to Medellin, Colombia? See my guy Andres with Nomad Travel for safe airport pickups and drop-offs and tours. Contact information in the description below. If you're in Medellin and you need dental work done, from a basic cleaning to major reconstructive surgery, come see my guy, Dr. Carlos Mori. Contact information in the description below. Thanks for hitting like. You did the right thing by hitting like. Thanks for hitting like. Thanks for hitting like. DC Born Rob.